Hello everyone! In this video, we will create a simple puzzle game for Android, where a player has to put color rings together in the correct order. If player did it wrong, then wrong sign appears and game is reloaded. If player did it right, then you win sign appears and game is reloaded as well. Our assets are available by the link in the description, so you will be able to make such game following this video. So let's get started. First of all, let's cover some important thing. It is about scale and size of our game objects. Let's add a background sprite to our scene. As you can see, it's much bigger than our scene view, so we should scale it down. Before we do it, let's add another game object that will be used in our game. It is a blue ball, green ring, red ring, a stand which appears behind the background. To fix this, just set its order layer option to higher value, so it appears in front of the background. And yellow ring. So, all of these game objects are a little too big. One of the way to scale them down is to modify their sprites pixel per unit option. Let's start from our background. Select background sprite and set its pixel per unit option to higher value. The higher this value is, the smaller corresponding game object appears. Let it be 200. Hit apply to save this change. Background becomes twice smaller. Let's delete it for a while. Now, let's scale down the rest of our game objects. To scale them down evenly, let's select all of their sprites and modify pixel per unit option for all of them at once. 150 should be fine. Hit apply. There we go. Now our game objects will have appropriate size when they add it to the scene. Ok, delete them for now. Now we can begin to make our game. First I add a background and scale it up a bit in X axis so it covers the entire scene view. Next I add a stand which hides behind the background again. Let's set order layer to 1 to bring it to upper layer and position it somewhere at the bottom left corner. Next game object will be a blue ball. Order in layer will be 2, so it will be rendered in front of the stand. Next game object is green ring. Order in layer is 2 as well. Next one is red ring. Order in layer is 2. And last game object is yellow ring. Order in layer is 2. Now let's place our rings at their final correct positions. Keep in mind those coordinates that we pass to each ring. We will use them in the scripts later on. So blue ball goes to the top tip of the stand. Green ring goes to the middle of the stand. Red ring goes to the bottom. And yellow ring goes between blue ball and green ring. There we go. I drag and drop yellow ring between blue ball and green ring, so our game objects appear in the correct order in the hierarchy, just to keep it clear. Ok, now let's create some UI text elements. First I create a canvas and set its scale mode to scale with screen size. Next right click on canvas and create new UI text. I rename it as win text. It will show us you win sign when game is completed. Double click it to focus on it. Here it is in the middle of the canvas. Let's position it about at the right side. Modify its text field so it show us you win sign. I like chunk 5 font family, so I drag and drop this font into font slot. Make font size bigger and align it at the center. As you can see, our text disappears when we increase font size. It's because text doesn't fit its container. Let's scale it up and text will appear back again. Ok. Let's change font color to some green tint. Now duplicate win text by pressing Ctrl plus D keys and rename this new text game object as wrong text. It will show up when the pyramid is assembled the wrong way. Modify its text field so it shows wrong sign. Align it at the middle. And set its color to red for example. Exclamation sign is missed. There we go. Now we had to create one more game object, which will control our game. Create new empty and rename it as game control. Let's reset it so it will be in the center of our scene. Here it is. Now it's time to pay attention to our scripts. Let's begin with pyramid control script. Here it is. First, here we have slots occupied variable that will help us to determine number of rings that took their places on the stand. Next, we have rings array of transform type that will be assigned in inspector, which will help us to get coordinates of each ring. Also, here we have win sign and wrong sign variables that can be assigned in inspector 
and which will help us to turn win and wrong sign on and off. Start method. First, here we subscribe to puzzle done event, which we will examine closer a bit later. As for now, just let's say that check results method will be invoked when puzzle done event occurs in drag script. OK. Then we set slots occupied value to 0 and turn win sign and wrong sign off. So, when puzzle done event takes place, then check results method is invoked. Here we check if each of the ring occupies its correct position on the stand. Checking their Y coordinates is pretty enough. So, if all of the rings positioned correctly, then win sign is turned on and reload game method is invoked in 2 seconds. So we can play our game one more time. And else, if only one of the ring isn't on its correct place, then wrong sign appears and reload game method is invoked in one second to play again. Reload game method is pretty simple. First, we need to unsubscribe from that puzzle done event. We always should unsubscribe from any of the global event when we no longer need it. If we don't do this, then for example, we will get missing reference exception if scene will be reloaded and we will try to refer to that event again. Just like in our case. OK. After that we reload our current scene named sample scene. That's the pyramid script. Drag and drop the script to game control game object. Select game control. Here is our script attached. Number of rings in array will be 4 as we have 4 rings in our game. Now we need to drag and drop rings game objects into these slots in correct order. First one will be blue ball. It goes to the first slot. Yellow ring goes to the second slot. Green ring goes to the third slot. And red ring goes to the fourth. OK. Order is correct. Also drag and drop win text and wrong text game objects into corresponding slots. Win text goes to win sign. Wrong text goes to wrong sign. OK. To drag our rings, to control their positions and to trigger puzzle done event, we will use a script named drag. Let's take a look at it. First, here is where we declare our event named puzzle done. This event will be called down below when the puzzle is finished whether it's correct or not. This event has type of action and to use this class we need to use system library in this script. So, when the puzzle is finished, then drag script screams to the world. Hey, the puzzle is finished, please do something. To hear this scream, the other scripts that actually want to do something have to be subscribed to this event. That is what we did in start method of pyramid control script. So, when pyramid control script hears that scream, then check results method is invoked. Pretty simple. OK. Let's move on with drag script. Next variable is stand position that will help us to determine where to put our rings. Next variable is initial position that will hold the position where the ring will be returned when finger is released not near the stand position. Render variable will help us to change order and layer option so the ring that is being dragging will be rendered in front of the other game objects. Delta X and Delta Y variables will help us to calculate an offset between touch position and the center of the ring, so the ring will be moved with this offset. Without this offset, the ring will jump towards touch position if we touch the ring a bit far away from its center. Move allowed variable will help us to move only the ring that we initially touched. Without this variable, the other ring can be moved with the one that we are already moving if they overlap. And locked variable will help us to lock the ring on the stand, so we will not be able to move it until the end of the current game. In start method, we mark an initial position and get renderer component. The rest of the code is in update method. So, if touch count is greater than zero, which means that we touch the screen with at least one finger, and if this particular ring is not locked yet, then we assign touch variable that will hold information about this particular touch event. Using this variable, we can get an information about touch position, assigning touch position variable. Then, in switch statement, we go through different touch phases. So, if touch phase equals to begin, which takes place when we put our finger on the screen, then we check if our touch position is within the game object's collider. We will add those colliders to our rings a bit later. So, if it happens, then it's obvious that we touched the ring. In this case, move allow it becomes true so we can move this ring. Also, here we calculate that offset between our touch position and the center of the ring game object. Also, we set order layer to 3, so this game object will be rendered in front of the others which have this value equals to 2. If touch phase equals to moved, which means that we move our finger, then position of the ring is set depending on touch position and that calculated offset. Last phase here is touch phase ended, 
which takes place when the finger is released. When it happens, move allow it becomes false and order in layer is set back to its initial value, to 2 in this case. Then we check a position where our finger was released. If it happens near enough from the stand position, somewhere about here, then we should determine which position or slot this particular ring will take. Switch statement, where we process slot occupied variable from pyramid script, will help us with that. So if number of slots occupied equals to zero, which means that the stand is empty yet, then this ring will be put at the bottom of the stand, right here. And slots occupied value is set to 1, so the first slot is marked as occupied. If slots occupied equals to 1, so the first slot is occupied already, then this ring will be put above the first one, right here. And slot will be marked as occupied as well. And so on. If the second place is taken, then the ring will be positioned on the third one. If third one is taken, then it will be placed at the top of the pyramid. And when all of the slots are taken, Puzzle Done event announces that it's time to check the results. Pyramid Control Scripts hears that and invokes Check Results method. At the end of this case statement, we lock the ring at the place it takes. And else, if we release a finger away from the stand, then the ring returns to its initial position. That's the script. Drag and drop the script to blue ball, yellow ring, green ring and red ring game objects. Now, as I said before, we need to add a colliders to our rings, so they could detect our touch. Select all of them and add a box collider to the component to them. I also set those colliders as a triggers. Almost done. Now let's disassemble our pyramid. There we go. And last thing to do is to drag and drop stand game object into stand position slot of drag script component attached to each ring. So select all of the rings and drag and drop stand game object into that slot. Everything is done. Now we can create an APK file and see how it works on Android device. This is how it works on mine. Hope this tutorial was useful for you. Thank you for watching. See you next time.